Lisa. Welcome to the first day of Load Layout a Day. Uh, it's a month-long event here in February, and the uh, topic for this month is called Mythbusters. Lane Amon hosts this, and you can find out more information about it with the link uh, to my blog post in the description for this video. I'm going to be doing some videos throughout the month. I'm not committing myself to doing a page every day. That's sort of the goal, but I know that uh, with other obligations, I probably won't get one done every day, but I, will, I do plan to get more pages done than I did last month and I'm planning to scrap some things that I might not normally have done. That's sort of what my real objective is for the month. Each day we get a prompt and today's prompt had to do with um, photos and not worrying about a photo being absolutely perfect to scrapbook it. So the way I have decided to interpret that prompt is I'm taking a photo that actually was darn near perfect when it was taken. Um, and, but it's not anymore. This was made back in the 70s. It's my grandmother and me. And the photo, I found it a few years ago in a box of her stuff that was stored in a building that's not air conditioned, not heated. Um, there was nothing really to protect the photo and it had probably been exposed to sunlight uh, in her living room for many years before that so it's quite faded it has some stains on it but I still love the photo and I love it because my grandmother's smiling she was a very kind woman she was also very sad and she very seldom smiled but when she did it was just magic so that's what I want to make my page about now I have taken this photo and I've scanned it um, for my computer. I am going to use the original though on the layout. My feeling is this is the safest place for the photo is in my scrapbook with uh, lots of acid-free papers and things that, that this is the best place for it anyway. The, photo, the papers that I have to work with here are from Stamping Up. This is a collection called Spice Cake. I bought it on sale or on clearance some time ago. They, when they have stuff on clearance, it's really cheap. Um, and it's beautiful papers. They're very, to me, they're, they're kind of old-fashioned. I think they work with the photo, especially the 70s colors here with the gold and the, the green. Um, and I still have some of these little um, flare badges from Prima. I did use a few on a class project the other day, but I've got uh, one left in particular that I know I want to use. The stamp, uh, or the paper had a, a matching stamp, so I have that to use for an embellishment. Uh, this, I did go ahead and create a sketch for this since I've kind of allocated my whole day to doing the first day of load. I had some extra time. Um, so I went ahead and made a special sketch for this for a 5x7 photo. I'm going to have a journaling over here on the side. It's pretty simple, but the idea was to use uh, quite a bit of pattern paper. So I'm going to have a pattern paper background and then another piece laying in here and some strips going around the photo. The only thing I'm a little concerned about is this is a lot of one collection and I don't want it to be overly matchy matchy. I mean that's what we did back in the 70s is everything matched um, but I, I'm not sure that I want that for this so I may be adding and I'm thinking about adding in some book paper to give it kind of an old-fashioned sort of thing and yeah I know there goes my acid-free um, thing but still I won't use a lot of it. Um, I have printed my journaling out on some vellum because I'm planning to use this as a main paper and I wanted to, to put the journaling on top. It's not going to work with one layer of vellum. I may have to do two layers of vellum or I may have to put it on something and that's where I'm thinking about maybe um, putting something over some of this um, book paper and adding this in or using it part of the embellishment. I haven't decided. I've, I've got to work on that. Uh, one thing I do have is my title here and this is those mistable thickers that you can, you can just add mist to them. I'm going to use some um, pastels, I think, on mine uh, to give it the, a coloring, uh, old-fashioned kind of coloring that I think will go with this. So I'm going to get started with cutting some papers and doing uh, my title, and then we'll figure out some of the embellishment. I've taken one of my pages and cut it to 11 inches square, which is what the sketch showed, and it also showed it going all the way in the lower right-hand corner, and that was just a little too far down for me. I didn't like that even though I designed it. So I pushed it up some and I'm going to be adding some distressing to the edges of this for sure. Um, for now though I want to work on the title. I'm using Stamping Up's Pestels. This is no longer available. It's an older product but I've still got these and they work well with these canvas um, pickers. So I'm just adding some color over the top. Sometimes you get a deeper color, sometimes a lighter color. It's just more of a little bit more of an experiment. You can always go over the top of them though with mists or paints, 
so it's not really a big deal if I mess them up I can do something different and I'm just using a variety of colors here the more mustard a green and a brown color I think it's soft suede to um, match the papers it's a nice thing about stamping up is all the colors coordinate and I'm probably going to need to add some distress inks to these before I'm done because they're a little bright they look better on there than I thought but I just feel like they need a little bit of distressing uh, and speaking of distressing, um, I'm going to do the edges of the paper. This kind of surprised me. This collection's sort of an old-fashioned type look to me, and it didn't have distressing on the edge. But I like that because you can always add distressing. You can't take it away. So I'm putting some vintage photo on, and I'm doing that also on the um, background sheet. But I also thought it might be interesting to take some uh, direct ink to paper with the walnut stain and make a really dark edge for the for the background. And you'll see the the whole thing. There you go starting to see the whole thing and you'll see it laid out here in just a moment with how it uh, looks and the, the distressing really adds a lot to the paper so I have it glued down and I'm about ready to put uh, some of the other things on there that's why I'm kind of checking the letters and realizing they probably need a little bit of something to tone them down so I added just a little bit of vintage photo on there not it, it didn't really take a lot but it it still helps I think to have a little bit of the vintage photo. Now I'm picking some papers for those borders and I'm looking for things that have that stripe kind of look to them. There's a gold one I can't seem to find here and I found a piece of it. It was the back side of one of those other papers and I didn't have a lot of it left. There were two sheets of each one in the collection but um, I had already used a little bit of it. I have a strip here that I had cut three quarters of an inch wide to experiment and I thought that might be a little bit wide the sketch had it at a half inch so I'm trying it at a half inch and I think I like that better so I go back and I cut all of them sort of a half inch more by the pattern on the paper I'm just placing them which ones over the top and which ones at the bottom that I like uh, the way they look I'm also going to have some brads uh, in the corners that I'll add and I do that off camera so I'm just gluing these things down trying to keep glue off my photo right. and the, the title I decided to do on two rows and back to this journaling it, the, it's not going to work on the transparency without something behind it so I'm considering using some book paper behind it maybe with some paint over it I'm also looking at maybe using some of the book paper in the embellishment if I use it in one place on the page I probably need to put it somewhere else too so I'm going to stamp my matching stamp here on the book paper and the soft suede ink that goes with the paper. I'm also going to um, stamp one of these images in a green ink, uh, I think it's Pear Pizzazz, on some ivory cardstock and punch that out. This was one of those stamps that was designed to work with several punches. So there's a five petal flower punch that goes with that green I'm just going to trim out with a wide border my um, book paper and I'll add the green over the top of it. It needed a little bit of distress ink too so it didn't look too, um, I don't want to say perfect, but it didn't look too new. And I'm going to have the piece of flare on the top and I do think it's probably going to need something to border it because it's not quite showing up enough so I may have to put some darker paper behind it. Now going back to the journaling I'm trying a couple of paint colors. The distress paints aren't really always the same color as the distress ink in my opinion anyway. The vintage photo is a little too orange so I went to just a regular ordinary craft paint. It's hard to tell whether it's going to the, the uh, vellum's going to show up on it because I can't lay it down there until this paint gets dry. But I'm just putting a little bit over the, dis the book paper so you can still see some of it through. Using my scoreboard on the vellum so I can tear it easily without having to, um, without having to worry about tearing the words and having to reprint it. And of course it's had plenty of time to dry. You always have to worry about vellum. The, the ink takes a little while to dry on it. So now I'm going to do some trimming off here, some with scissors and some by hand. This paper tears very easily. This book is from the um, late 1800s, so it's very delicate. 
Okay, and I'll glue that down. Okay, I've got my page completed. I added some stitching around this edge and around the um, journaling area. I added a little bit of twine to this embellishment and I also took the stamp and stamped it on some brown paper that matched the collection and cut that out to, to give this a little bit more uh, emphasis. So we have a really old photo that's faded a lot. It's not perfect anymore, um, but it is uh, the photo that I have and I'm really pleased with how it came out. Uh, one thing that I kind of wish I had done, I didn't really plan to do this, but it would be a great way to do a heritage uh, pay, uh, photo is to have just put a little bit of adhesive on the photo, just a tiny bit to hold it down bef until I put these strips on there and let those hold the photo in place. <laughs> that would have been a, a great idea. That wasn't really my plan. I was just doing the strips for decorative and I put adhesive all on the back. But if you were using this for an older photo, you could do that. You could put just a tiny bit of adhesive and then you wouldn't have adhesive on your photo and that would further uh, protect it for generations to come. But anyway, this was our sketch. Followed the sketch uh, really closely. And so you can find the sketch on my blog as well as more information about load um, if you'd like to participate. And I'll leave you with just a few other close-ups of the page. Thanks for watching today. And I hope you'll join me again uh, for more pages this month.